Welcome to the Top 10 Starfield Mods of the Week, Episode 3. In this video, I've got 10 awesome mods to share with you, but before we do take a look at them, make sure you do subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any future Starfield Mod videos. Another week has passed, with yet another 1,000 mods created for this game. It is tough taking 1,000 and narrowing it down to just 10, but let's get started and kicking off the top 10 countdown in 10th place this week is the Faster Favourites menu from Stentorius and this mod allows you to speed up the Favourites menu animation and it also removes the flickering as well. Even though it is much quicker than going through the inventory, I just felt like the delay opening it up just wasn't it for me. As you can see on screen, it is just much quicker to open up the favorites menu. However, there are a few other options included with this mod. So it does have a few backgrounds that you can change. So you can have it at 100%, 50% or 0% no background if you wish to do so. On top of that, you will also have the option to control the favorites menu with WASD if you're on PC. So there is some nice customization tweaks going on here. In ninth place this week, we have another animation speed up mod. And this one is the faster airlock and hatch animations mod from Dank Raft. So this mod allows you to speed up the animations of airlocks and hatches in outposts, as well as airlocks leading to loading screens. You may feel the same way as I do about the speed of hatches opening in this game. Sometimes I just want to get straight into a location and some of them are just taking far too long to open and close. What is cool about this mod is you get a variety of changes in speed to choose from. So you can have 1.2 times, 1.5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 50 times speed. So you can have it still being realistic to some extent, or you can just have it open absolutely instantly with no animation. In eighth place this week, we have the Stellar Water mod from Cyanide X. So this mod introduces more realistic water surfaces using handcrafted custom water textures for some of the various bodies of water in the game. Cyanide X does say that this replacement mod is not as intricate as their Cyberpunk water mod, but it does a better job at making the water look a little bit more realistic. In seventh place this week, we have the New Atlantis billboard map from Just OK Gamer. So this mod adds a map that has various points of interest that you'll want to visit into the game world as a map. So this makes use of the map as found on gamemaps.com. So some of you may want to just pull that up on a second monitor, things like that. But for some extra immersion, it does replace some of the posters you'll see around New Atlantis. One of the main issues with this game is the truly awful surface map, especially when it comes to settlements like New Atlantis. You don't really know where shops are and things like that. This mod allows you to keep immersion because this is a map you'd probably expect to see in New Atlantis itself. You can find these at every NAT station within the middle of New Atlantis. In sixth place this week, we have the 8K Planets mod from Revan. So this mod upscales the textures from 4K to 8K of every single planet in the game. AI was used to upscale all of these textures as well as additional layers. There is also some original Moon, Mars, Venus and Jupiter textures as well. It's a big mod, it comes in at like 12 gigabytes or something like that, but you do have the option of having the NASA Sol system planets or just the NASA generic planets. Sometimes I do feel like the textures aren't sharp enough when I'm getting closer to a planet, things like that. So for the most part, it definitely looks better, although it is a big download. In fifth place this week, we have the customizable hood mod from Mace Your Face. So this mod allows you to customize the hood as you wish to do so. This should be something that's standard within the game, but nevertheless, it allows you to change the colors of various parts of the hood, hide the scanner vignette, add a carry weight readout to the scanner UI, which is definitely really helpful. You can adjust the thresholds and colors for the health bar, oxygen and more, which is a nice touch. It's definitely better than just having it go from white to red when you're nearly dead. It does require you to do a bit of fiddling about changing the colors and stuff within a file, but I do think the amount of customization you have at your disposal is really good. Some people would really like this in the game itself, because so many games do this now, but they'll really appreciate this mod for what it does. 
There is also versions that offer 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second animation, which is good to see. More options will be coming over time, such as the ability to hide ship UI junk, custom crosshair colours, the scale of the crosshair, the option to hide the compass itself, and much more. In fourth place this week, we have the Galactic Stormtrooper voice lines for UC security mod from Mantelis. So this mod replaces voice lines for both the male and female UC security force voices with AI generated voice lines that feature Star Wars lore. Now, you can't really tell it's AI specifically. It's only like one word that has been replaced in each voice line. It doesn't sound off, to be honest. I'll let you hear them in just a moment, but I really do like this. If you are using the Galactic Civil War conversion mod, which I showcased in my previous episode in the series, you will love this mod. Any references to the United Colonies or Vanguard have been replaced with the Empire, Imperial Navy, Imperial Army, Trooper, Rebellion, things like that. So... This is what it sounds like, and it works really well. Those mercenaries the Empire keeps hiring, they're a bunch of money-hungry scumbags. They get treated better than the average trooper. Ever wonder how the Rebel Alliance seems to be everywhere? It's because they have little outposts everywhere. There were so many facilities abandoned after the Clone War. The Rebels used them all over the galaxy. Look who's got a slug thrower. Did you kill a Tuscan for that? Never turn into one of those Rebels, scum of the galaxy. A good rebel is a dead rebel. In the third place this week, we have the Mandalorian Bounty Hunter mod from Zeroth. So this mod allows you to play as the Mandalorian in Starfield. So this mod replaces the Mantis armor with the Guard armor and Starborn helmet. So if you have unlocked the Mantis armor or you want to use console commands to unlock it, then that's how you get this suit. And as you can see, it's a pretty good recreation using the assets in the game retextured. I feel like the T-Visor doesn't work entirely well, but the body completely works. You also have the option to change this screen on his torso with various options. So there is this little bit of art of Grogu, just a blank image, a blue screen, the Mythosaur, and a wanted screen. All of these are optional files and you can pick which one you want. There are three variants of the armor to use. So there is the lighter, dark and black variants. Plus in the future, the modder intends to add Bo-Katan, Jango Fett and Boba Fett variants to this mod. Speaking of Boba Fett and Jango Fett, this mod, which is the Mandalorian, Boba Fett and Jango Fett mods from Akasin, introduces those characters into Starfield. It retextures... This mod does introduce... This mod replaces the Starborn and Mantis armor with these versions of Boba Fett, including his classic variant and new variant, the Mandalorian and Jango Fett. Personally, I feel like the color scheme works really well and the helmets are especially good. That is the standout of this mod and it's just really, really well done. They've done such a good job at capturing the Mandalorian helmet design within the Starborn helmet. You can have the option to have the cape or no cape, replace replace the jetpack, make the jetpack invisible, have it, it works for both male and female characters, and more. And the winner of this top five mods of the week episode is the customizable ship interiors mod from Dream Sounds. This mod allows you to customize your ship's interior or any interior for that matter within the game, just like Outposts. It enables build mode inside your ship and allows you to decorate your ship inside how you wish to do so. I was very surprised to find out that this was not part of the game. When I started building my first outpost, I was like, this has got to be in the ship part, right? I can put up posters, put up furniture, things like that. So I went to my ship and I couldn't figure out how to do it. And then I realised this is for outposts, not for ship interiors. Yes, you can bring things into your ship and move them around, place them, but you can't put big things like furniture, right? Well, this mod just completely allows you to do that. You can rotate things, move things, do everything you could previously in outposts, but with your ship. And I really do like this. This mod is a bit unstable, so please do read the mod page before you do check it out properly for yourself, because there are some warnings, but it's still gonna be fine to use. You may just experience some errors that you'll come across, but there are ways to navigate around that. 
Which mods were your favourite this week? Let me know down in the comment section below. Remember, you can check out each of these mods for yourself using the download links in the description below. If you do have a standout mod for this week, remember to vote in the community tab poll that's on my channel page, and I will show you the results at the end of next week's episode. But now let's take a look at the results of last week's episode, which over 500 of you voted in. So the winner with 71% of the votes was the Galactic Civil War Conversion mod, Following in second place with 14% was the N7 armor mod. Then in third place with 10% was Star UI Inventory. And then Effect Textures Enhanced took fourth place with 5%. As a quick reminder, I can only put four images in a poll on YouTube, so I can't do five or all 10, unfortunately. That's just a limitations within YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like to help support the channel and keep this series going. Subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode, and if you did miss any of my previous videos, click on the playlist on screen right now, and I shall see you in my next video. Goodbye.